Welcome to Crazy Hank TV. We took a couple weeks off just to regroup, get people, let people catch up. But now we're back with the last rewatch tonight. We'll be talking about the hunting party and fire plus water. I'm joined by JP and Jeremiah. How's it going, guys? Living, going the, good? living the dream. Living the dream. And I, I like your 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 name there. Uh, where's my son? <laughs> Walt! <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I was I was at that point in the show where Walt was just getting too old to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's unfortunately they. Uh, I don't think they. Uh, well, did they plan that out? I mean, because they had to know they because everyone assumed he had a bigger role on the show, right? I yeah, gotta, yeah, I got to think so that they probably you have to. I mean, we're in the second season, so I'm assuming that they probably figured, okay, if we're if we're picked up for season two, let's go with this plan. But if not, we'll just we'll just end it where we ended it at the end of season one. But I don't know. What do you think, Jeremiah? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I kind of wanted that too. I mean, we as longtime Lost fans know that that was an issue that they that the show had to deal with. Was the fact this kid was growing so fast, and it was like, what are we going to do? Right. So I, I do wonder if they had altered their plans as far as how they were going to handle that storyline. So. I mean, you, I watched. I mean, if you guys watch Lost in Space on Netflix, and, and the guy, that kid that plays Will, has like grown like eight inches, and in like since the last you know in a year, and he, he's obviously older. So they just they just put it seven months later, eight months later. But they really couldn't do that with Lost since it was day. You know, they're only on day fifty. Right. I think on the hunting part or the hunting party, it was only fifty days. I think Jack says. So I guess they really couldn't. You know. I guess they had to just regroup and do something else. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was definitely, I'm sure, a challenge for the writers. And, uh, you know, I think what we wind up getting overall on that uh, worked out pretty good, I feel. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure it was, it's, it was a problem. It was definitely a problem. Yeah, anytime you have kid actors, it, it is it is a problem. But uh, what are you going to do? I, I guess, especially on a show where it's not years, it's days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Taller Ghost Walt we'll have later on somewhere in this season. Uh what fourth season, fifth season, third yeah. season. I can't I can't I can't remember. It all blends together. Before I go on though, JP, this is your first time on the Lost Rewatch. Uh how did you get into Lost? I'm sure I'm sure it's a great, great, uh, interesting story. Yeah, I you know, it was a chilly September morning in two thousand and four. I was flipping the stations. I was, um, no, I, I honestly, from what I remember, I think I was, I might have actually started listening to your podcast. Um, I don't, what was it back then? Was it the Married Man Show? Uh, Married Man Show, that was a couple years after Law started. I might have, I probably found you and Jay at that point and just okay. into Lost, maybe. Or you know, just through you know, water cooler talk or something like that. I mean, it was right. it was definitely a binge worthy show. I know I didn't watch it from the beginning. I was renting DVDs from Netflix at that point. <laughs> and from what I remember, I think I was about. I think I jumped on board uh, about halfway through season two, so I had a binge to catch up and then take off from there. All right. So the Married Man show could have possibly have connected you to loss. Possibly. I might have been listening to like whatever your core show was back then. Yeah. Just saw you guys talking about lost. I figure I'd rather try that than doing things with Q-tips. <laughs> yeah. Don't blame me on that one. Oh, okay. We don't have to go there. But anyway, uh, two good episodes today. I, I enjoyed one more than the other. I, we'll get to that. What I guess later on when we talk about whether we liked it or not. But we got we start off with the hunting party, and you got Jack and Christian, uh, his dad, never seeing eye to eye. Always, yeah. you know, going back and forth. And you got Gabriella and her her dad um, wanting to. He, he's got a tumor on his spine, and the, the, Christian's like, "No, we can't do it. We can't do it." And he goes, "I'm not here for you. I'm here for the miracle worker." 
Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think it was kind of ironic that you had asked uh, for me to join on this one because the the last time I was on, we discussed No Harm, which was the beginning of Jack's relationship with Sarah, where we get to learn about uh, they were getting ready to get married oh, right, yeah. and all that stuff. And here we are now, we kind of see the aftermath of what's happened with the, which clearly you could tell knowing what we know about Jack that, you know, this the marriage wasn't going to go well <laughs> because right. of how this uh, relationship got started. And then he it's seen the aftermath now, and now you've got this whole stuff that's going on with uh jack of course trying to save someone as you said right. the miracle worker so that was kind of yeah. funny that, that that this is the episode we're talking about <laughs> um it, it, it's it's always funny how they just is there respect there between jack and his dad i mean does dad does jack respect his dad i mean there's always he's always giving him shots you know that they're always kind of bickering back and forth but is there respects for their 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 talent you know, as, as surgeons. I think his dad, from what I remember now, I, I have to say, I haven't watched the show in 10 years. Uh, who I obviously haven't watched since probably 2005, 2006. Um, initially what hit me was how quickly I remembered what some of the backstories were and what's going to come up in the, in the up and coming episodes after this one. Um, what I always felt or what I remember feeling between the relationship with his dad and with Jack's dad is it, it's, it felt like, like his dad had set the bar really high for him. And like Jack was just always disappointing him. Yeah, which probably it's probably true. Yeah. Now, do you think Jack agreed to do the surgery because they said he was a miracle worker to maybe to go stick it to his dad, or maybe because Gabriella said, "Hey, will you do the surgery?" Yeah, I mean Gabriella's pretty pretty hot, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, this this is just Jack. This is just Jack. How he is. I mean, we we know he cannot stop himself from if he feels like he can can fix something he's obviously going to go for it it's the same reason why he had so much passion on the on the island portion of the story where he's so passionate about going after michael and trying to get him back and fix that situation he wants to fix everything so i don't i don't think the guy is capable of saying ah you know sorry but your dad you know he can't make it this isn't going to work he, he just can't he's not in his nature he can't do that and right. to answer your question earlier is i do kind of feel like there's so much tension always between Jack and Christian, but I'd always felt like though, that he did have respect for, you know, his father in his skill level, but he's, um, he's like you said, never felt like he's ever going to live up to what his, his father's expectations are, of course. And, you know, and of course he wasn't a very good father to him. So he has, you know, I don't know if he was ever going to completely, Loved the guy, but he, as we know, he did. I mean, he just didn't show it very well. Right. It's almost like he's got a hard time when somebody either in the flashback or in present day is telling him, don't move forward. He's going to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's tr definitely right. true. Yeah. Well, that's why him and Locke have always battle because they're, they're both stubborn. Right. And, and they obviously see things differently, but it's, it's just like, it's, Season two, it just seems like there's more friction between Jack and Locke than there was in season one. Yeah, for sure. It's like he, Jack. Jack has no patience for Locke whatsoever. Yeah, it's like it's like that. Just continue to build and build and build as the seasons go on uh, between the two of them. Uh, that right. and it's very evident here, but in season two, that it, it's just taken to another level for sure. But that's great. That's what we want. We want that tension. Uh, the mm -hmm. two of them together has has always been some of my favorite moments in Lost is is, is their interactions and how the, some of them are very painful to watch. Some of them are just great to watch. I mean, it's 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 always fun when those two get into it for sure. Well, I think this episode you had you had Sawyer, Jack, and Locke, and all three all three actors were doing a great job because there was so much friction and tension and what yeah. were they there for? It just it was uh, you know. Obviously, Jack's still upset with Kate, and we'll talk about that later on. But I, I, th I just thought it was, you know, and of course, Locke later on calls out, you know, you know, why'd you pick Sawyer as a name? First, I th you thought, why, why'd you pick Mr. Clean? Right. <laughs> but he, we find out it's something else. But anyway, we, we got Locke is knocked out. Michael points a gun at Jack and tells him to get in the in the vault. 
He goes, I, I, I won't shoot you, but I'll shoot your computer, which kind of shocks me that Jack would, would care. Uh, yeah, but I, I feel like I guess at this point he is starting to care a little bit because, um, I mean, he I don't know why, but he definitely seems like he, he sort of cares. I don't I don't know. Right. But you're right. He did. He kind of had like that look on his face when he said, "Like, oh, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Don't shoot the computer." I would have said, "Shoot the computer. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Go ahead." <laughs> I know it, it is a at this point in this in the story. Yeah, you were kind of like, "Hmm, why did he seem kind of upset there?" He he was like, you know, I don't know. That was weird. Was this the point from what I re, from what I remember ten years ago? I, I think Jack didn't think anything would happen if you didn't put the numbers in it was Locke who kind of convinced him we have to do this it was he well, still well, was he well, still Jack, Locke, Jack, Jack, well Jack put the numbers I guess uh, he, he he Locke forgot the numbers Jack remembered the numbers what putting them in because uh Locke was putting in 32 and it was 42 so Jack kind of I guess got into it but it's still to me. I, I'm, I'm going to call Michael's bluff. He, he's not going to shoot me, right? Right. So yeah. yeah, go shoot. Go shoot the computer. I don't care. Of course, it's going to freak out Locke. But uh. <laughs> yeah, Locke was, would have lost his mind at that point right now. So, and plus, Jackson is a good poker player, right? From what uh, we've yeah. seen on the show. So I'm I'm playing poker with him. I say shoot the computer. I don't care. Yeah. Now we, we did learn that, that Jack is a very accomplished uh, poker player. So uh, when he, he wiped the floor with uh, Sawyer, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I like how they they agreed to do it. They lock him in the, the vault, and Jack goes, "Oh, we'll just climb through the vent." And and, and that's when uh, Locke tells, "Well, I made it, so we couldn't get into the vent." And so you know. Yeah. <laughs> and Jack's just like, "Great, great job, Locke. Yeah, great job. Way to go." <laughs> Actually, it's not a bad idea. No, it wasn't a bad idea. It was just the timing of everything. And of yeah, course. it just I, again. I think it's where where Locke does things where he doesn't tell it. I the whole, we've said this before. Everybody on the island does kind of their own thing. They don't tell. They don't communicate. But yeah. I'm thinking it's not a bad idea by Locke. But maybe you tell somebody, hey, this is what the thing about doing is locking these vents so nobody can get in and and take the guns because it wouldn't be that hard to you know saw Kate doing it so. Right. Um, anyway, um, Kate tells, uh, so there's no one there to press the button and Jack kind of, Jack kind of has a, it's kind of like a, he's, it's a dig at lock. I think when he says, yeah, now we got no one to push the button lock. Yeah. You, your computer. So here again, I go back to where Jack, does he really care about the button being pressed? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I, I don't know because I do think he, he he definitely that line was definitely directed to kind of dig at him for sure and uh, yeah. I don't know I mean uh, just knowing how how things play out like every time when I do my rewatch I and and knowing that we know what does happen when you don't press the button I'm just trying to visualize those two locked in there together and he goes off <laughs> I'm like that would be just such an awkward moment there <laughs> just as they're right. they realize uh oh we're in real trouble and they're sitting there locked in that stupid safe <laughs> and what what kind of words would Jack have for him then <laughs> <laughs> idiot <laughs> <laughs> could have been really entertaining but then you have uh, Kate wakes Jack a uh, uh, Sawyer up. Uh, from his nap, uh, throws a banana at him. He said, "There's better ways to wake you, wake some, uh, a guy up." Freckles, but they had changed his bandages, so that worked out well because Sawyer did his bandage change. So now there's someone at least to let them out of the uh, the vault. Yes. So the long wait continues to see what happens when the button doesn't get pressed. So right. Uh, then Kate puts in the numbers, and Sawyer opens up the thing, and so then. Uh, I, Locke is uh, Sawyer seemed upset. Did Sawyer seem upset that Michael went out on his own? Um, like almost like know. he cared. He... Yeah, I mean Sawyer. You know that's how Sawyer is, though. Sometimes, but uh, I don't know. Did you did you think that? Did you did you guys feel that way? I, I what about you, JB? I noticed it a little bit. I think. I mean, I think he does care. I mean, he, he definitely has that side to him, even though he doesn't wear uh, his heart on his sleeve. But, um, yeah, and I, th I think he was um, – I mean, I, obviously, everybody's very concerned with Walt also. Yeah, I mean, those two relationship changed so much, you know, when they went on the on the raft to try yeah. to, you know, to get off the island. And, and uh, so much happened between the two of them uh, out there 
that I do think the relationship had changed quite a bit. So I think Sawyer's reaction to the fact that, you know, Michael had ran off would have been different maybe than before the, uh, you know, they were on the raft. I mean, I could be wrong there, but I kind of feel like things have definitely changed there with the relationship at that point. It just seemed to me that Sawyer was like, he's going off without, you know, I would have helped him kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, could I, be wrong. I could be wrong, but it just seems like Sawyer was, you know, he went he went on his own, you know, kind of like that that kind of thing. Uh, then but we have Jack Sawyer and Jack. They go uh, Jack so John Sawyer and Jack go after uh, Michael. Uh, we come back and it's it's Jack and Gabriella and and the father sitting there and uh, he's been doing tests for months for one month on on uh, the patient. And uh, Gabriella is like, oh, you know, it's 430, you know, in the morning. Oh, no, I better get home. <laughs> he gets home and it, it, Sarah's awake. It looked like it was I, I looked at the clock. It looked like it said 515. It was pretty bright outside for 515. Yeah, uh, I guess it depends on. Do we know the time frame exactly like what month or of, of the year? I, of I guess I guess we don't. But I'm, I'm trying to think. Is the sun out at five fifteen anywhere? Um, I just, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been six fifteen. If it's six fifteen, but I I didn't go back and rewatch. But I, I made a point because Jack said he, it was four thirty. I did. I and they show the clock. I wanted to make sure it didn't say like four thirty five, something like that. I was I always always look I always look at the clocks on TV. I don't know why. When yeah. Like oh, when I, I do that too. Yeah, when they're filming a scene and, and you see a clock there, and you know that they they're doing multiple takes, I want to see what the clock does. The clock because sometimes sometimes they're good about it. Sometimes the clock doesn't change. Sometimes the clock is all over the place. It's a, you can see some shows where it'll say like four thirty, and then all of a sudden it's four twenty, and it, 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 whole different things. And I'm a little nuts, and I I look at things like that. And Jeremiah, you said do the same thing, but I do. I, I do. I, 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 I swear I said five fifteen. Um. But then Jack tells, uh, you know, you know, you know, he, he that she, she tells him, I might be pregnant. Yeah, and uh, Jack's reaction, again, probably not the one you want to have because he did seem kind of like, uh oh, you know, kind of concerned. And then she, yeah. she, she lets him write a note right away there. Hey, don't worry about it. It was negative, but it was just like, Jack, Jack. Duh. <laughs> You know, you don't want to be like looking like, oh no, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she he goes. Well, should we talk about it? Talk about what? Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, probably I mean, how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it, is it yeah. mine? Is it Christians? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we go back on the island, and of course, Kate wants to come along because she's got Hurley to take over, uh, push the button. Um, but, uh, Jack says, no. Yeah. Lady, you get in there and you push that button. That's hey, where you belong. Yeah. He's very, he's very passionate about that. No. Yeah. yeah. But then you have Sawyer, J J uh, locks, ask him, you know, when you're walking back, does any of this look familiar? And he goes, yeah, that, that over there is my favorite leaf. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. I, I just, I just thought that was great. Uh, Kate gets, uh, we'll talk about before Kate gets, uh, uh, Hurley to press the button and then Hurley talks to, uh, son and Jen telling kind of what's going on. Yeah. Of course, Jen, he's Michael's, fr he is Michael's friend for right. sure. For sure. And he sets off, but, and son says, Oh no, you don't. Yeah. She laid down the line, didn't she? She was like, yeah. nope. and he backed down. He did. He did. And uh, that's definitely a big change in their relationship for sure when, when right. he did that because I, I think the, he would have done that before. I, I think this is definitely shows some huge growth there. So and, and, and she was right. He needs to stay there. There's no sense. They've got plenty of people to go and try to track Michael down. We don't need another person out there and risk the fact that something could happen to him. Not only that, he doesn't know what direction they're going unless he was going to go with Kate, right? I, yeah, that's true. I, I guess that was his plan, but uh, since it didn't happen, we we didn't get to fully see how what was what he had in mind. But yeah, that just it seemed foolish to to do that at that point. I also liked I also liked her uh, when Hurley entered that scene, how they had that exchange about Jin wearing the hat. Yeah. The first <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> cool hat, dude. Cool hat, dude. Yeah. 
<laughs> and Jen's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, then you have, you, have, you have Locke and Jack kind of are going back and forth arguing. And, you know, about Michael running off. He, he shouldn't have done that. And, and, and Locke actually, I think Locke actually made sense. He does. He, he's, he's been more, you know, Jack's kind of irrational about this. He wants to control everybody. Where Locke says, who are we to tell people that they can't do what they want to do? Yeah, exactly. And and he's he really – he doesn't – we know how Jack – Jack just goes on the spur of things and does things that without thinking it through because clearly, yeah, well, even if you find Michael, he's probably not going to come back. He's no. he's on a mission, and he's not going to just say, no, yeah, you're right, I should go back. I mean it's just – it's I don't know. I just feel like, again, Jack's putting a lot of people at risk here uh, for something that's probably just a poor choice, and uh, that's Jack. So he does yeah. sometimes. All right, when he because he says to him, uh, you know, how are you going to get him back? I'll just I'll talk him into it. Yeah. I wonder what. I mean, obviously, we never got to see it, but I wonder what his what the conversation would have been. You know, what's that pitch? <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously, how was he going to talk him into it when he, he already talked to him once? Yeah. yeah. And he, not- he he locked him up in the vault. So I, I don't think there was any going to be any communication that that Jack could have got a was going to sway michael and coming back it, it, it just didn't make sense and i said lock is make, if, if if michael wants to go off by himself to be honest with you we talked about uh, on a couple episodes before we talked about how nobody was trying to help anyone find michael help you know help michael find walt right i mean you, you think somebody would go on a search looking for him you would think <laughs> i mean it's a kid i mean it's a child i mean <laughs> right should be some kind of urgency there, you would think, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. So then we <laughs> we, we go back, and then uh, we're back, on, and and Jack and Gabrielle are in the room together, you know, and then Christian walks in. Oh, did I did I interrupt something? <laughs> <laughs> and and Jack, if you look at uh, Matthew Fox, he gives it gave a great look, like whatever, you know, what are you what are you talking about, Dad? It yeah. was, uh, it was, he, without saying anything, he said, "No, you're not interrupting anything," and. Because that Christian tells him, okay, Jack, you, you need to be careful. Yeah. You know, there's a line. And he goes, well, I guess he, and he, Jack, of course, fights back. Goes, well, some people never had problems crossing that line. You know, <laughs> so his dad, he goes, well, you're different. Taking his father. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's a, it's, I, it's a nice warning though. I mean, his, this is a moment where, where, uh, his dad is really trying to give him some good advice, even though, of course, Jack's not, willing to take that advice but he's giving him some good advice here like hey tread lightly here on this because this could could go in a direction that you may regret right so i i, I actually agree with christian there i agree with you for sure on that um as I bad mean, as a christian we all know is a pretty terrible human being overall for the most part but he has his moments and this is one of those moments where he he was right and jack should really be should be more careful about this but now, does Christian have some insight because he was probably talking to right? He was he was talking with Sarah about their marriage problems, right? I think so, if I recall. Yeah, and plus too, I mean, Shepard's been in this position. I mean, he knows. I mean, he's you know, he's obviously he's not a faithful guy himself. He's probably been in similar situations when it comes to where this could lead, you know, and. Um, yeah, so I think there's just a lot of uh, his. Well, he, he did father a child in Australia, so we we know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, then we go back on that. This is where Sawyer uh, he goes. Why'd you pick that? You know, Locke goes to Sawyer. Why'd you pick that name? He goes. Well, all you would need is the earring and the mop, and it'd be perfect. You know, the Mister Clean. He goes. No. Why, why'd you? Why'd you? Why'd you pick Sawyer for your real name is James Ford? And right. Sawyer's like, and because Sawyer doesn't like being. Sawyer likes being up on everybody else. Right. Sure. He doesn't like when someone else has the information, you know, the upper hand on him. And it's because it was on the manifest. Right. Yeah. And you could tell Sawyer Sawyer was just really taken back by these questions. I mean, he really didn't know what to say. And um, it's great for this is this is just another one of those wonderful moments when you're doing your e-watch. To see these little bitty bits that uh, were there early on about what was to come, and 
and just it was there. And and of course, when we were watching the time, we didn't know the significance of this conversation until much later. But that's right. what I, that's what was so, so great. Whenever you question the writer, sometimes look back at those particular dialogue. This dialogue tells you that they had all the way up until that reveal, which is what season three. Am I for correcting right about, I the, so, yes. about the the connection there between uh, him and his father? So. It's great. That's great stuff. Those are just more these this this whole little piece of dialogue just is more proof that they had plans and they knew what they were doing. So that was great. If I if I remember correctly, also Sawyer was he was like a con man, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I would think just with what you were touching upon there, Jack, I would think in in Sawyer's line of work to now be affiliated with somebody who's going to always who. You know, Locke having one up on him, he's just probably not used to that. Yeah, and you could tell he was—he was like Jeremiah said—he was very agitated by it. I what I, I said earlier about the scene, you had all three. All three were like antagonizing each other. It, yeah. it wasn't nobody. There was nobody there, like a gin, like some, someone there to make peace. Like, okay, hey, we're here to we're here to. It was all about. You know, we're we're going to for some reason. We're, everyone had a different agenda going for Michael. They needed a Hurley. Yeah. Locke really yeah. didn't want to go. Yeah, Hurley would have been perfect. Yeah. Uh, Sawyer was going for revenge, and Jack was going because he had to fix the, you know, he had to fix everything. Right. So they're all just I then thought it was a great the whole scene with all three with those three characters was great because they're just the way they were just going after each other. I just I just yeah. loved it. Then they hear gunshots. And then of course Jack goes running towards the gunshots. <laughs> Locke's going. He's, he's yelling, "Michael, Michael! No, wait, 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 wait!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, Jack's acting irrational. Yeah. Whereas Locke's actually the one that's like, you know. And then they get in the whole argument about what, why they're doing it, and and all that different stuff. Yeah, it was. It's it's definitely a a role reversal there because, um, you know, I think that we've always kind of looked at at Locke. You know, especially for that first season, as being the irrational kind of guy who's doing probably some crazy stuff, and Jack kind of being the staple for everybody. And now Jack's just really going crazy here and just really just not thinking the stuff through. And and like you said, you got a lot going. You know, may, are we really doing the right thing here? It's it's really yeah. it was different. It's interesting to see that. Well, I mean, go ahead, JP. Locke is the one who knows how to strategize. He knows how to tr to track. Yeah. Know, Locke isn't going to be the one to hear gunshots and then just run into the line of fire. You know, Locke's going to want to – Locke would probably have been the one to kind of hang back, try to figure out where the shots came from, how many people are out there. You know, it was almost – you know, jumping ahead a little bit, it was almost that – it was almost Jack that pulled them into that spot where they didn't realize how many people were surrounding them. Right, exactly. Sure. But you, you also, but you have you have Jack who questions. You know, he questions Locke. Wh wh you know, why are you here? Why you, you're you're not trying to find him? Because you know, he's like, what do you mean I'm not trying to find him? You know, it, it's just why would I be out here if I wasn't trying to find him? Um, right. It's it's just it, like I said again, all three of them are just you know why are, why are all three of them there? <laughs> they all have a different agenda. What's going on? Then we go back off the island. Uh, the patient has died. Jack's beating up the lockers. And Kristen's like, hey, hey, you know, you tried, you did your best. And and he tells Gabriella that her dad had died because he thinks it's better that Jack and Gabrielle, again, he probably senses something that it's probably better that they're not together. Yeah. Yep, he did. And, of course, I don't think uh, Jack was too happy about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I should be telling her and stuff like that. But then, of course, Gabrielle is waiting in the parking lot for Jack. They kiss. And Jack says he can't. He, she, she says it's all right. He goes, no, no, I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm I can't. like, I said, oh, okay, Jack. Uh, <laughs> and it stays, stays true to Jack's character, what we know of him overall. I mean, he is definitely not the kind of guy who's going to go through with that. Maybe he is, you know, he likes to. He'd like to, but yeah. he's not going to. No. He's Jack. He's got to fix things, right? Yeah. And then we meet Mr. Friendly again. I don't. I don't. Do we know Miss Mr. Friendly yet? Um, I don't think so. I don't no, think so. I don't think so either. No, because uh, Sawyer Nick named him Zeke. Uh, yeah, 
but uh, we don't. I guess we don't know his name. I just said Mister Friendly because I think that's. We, yeah, we always... I, I think you're right. I think well, yeah, we know it, but I mean, yeah, I don't think they know it. Is that that's what you're asking, right? Yeah. But, yeah. No, you're right. I don't think at this point, no. Is this the first time? Again, I've just watched these two episodes. Is this the first time we're seeing him since the raft? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, if, if I remember correctly, I'm trying to remember all the uh, rewatch I've done. I think this is the second time we've seen him. And then we go back to the uh, the hatch, and Hurley and and, and Charlie are listening to. They don't they don't listen to Drama Jackson because they never heard of him. <laughs> but, uh, they play some records, and uh, you know, and then Hurley asks about Libby. What do you think about Libby? Yeah. What do you think about Libby? Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, and then, uh, uh, Charlie goes, you think Claire misses me? And he <laughs> Hurley, it's been a day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then wa Saeed walks in. This music is depressing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love that part when he came in here and said that. That was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was, oh. it was because, you know, Saeed's still in mourning over Shannon. Yeah. No, right? he's, he's still, you know, you know, feels bad, and and I think he was a little upset too that he wasn't taken on the the hunt, though, right? Which I that's see. the way I gather it too, because once they, as soon as they told him, he he was kind of like, why didn't somebody come and get me? You know, right. I do, I do think he was annoyed by that. Well, even when we get later on, we're, we'll get to that when when Jack says we're going to build an army. Why wouldn't you go to Saeed? Yeah, I mean, I, I, me, I've never I've never understood that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, to me, that's who I'd want for sure. It's you have to have him involved in that. I know he's not going to ask Locke. <laughs> no, there's, there's no, there's no way with that. But uh, anyway, Mister Friendly is talking to Jack Sawyer and Locke. Uh, he says it's our island, and you know <laughs> we al we allow you to be here. We and he's just he's saying all the wrong things to Jack because Jack doesn't like being told. You know that's why him and Locke don't get along. Neither one likes to be told what to do. No, no one likes to be really told what to do, I think, on this island, but no. especially those guys. I mean, they do not whatsoever. But then we have that great scene where we find out they're surrounded. Yeah. All and I still, even when they rewatched Jack, I still like, I still remember watching that first, that first time, and you're like, whoa. Oh boy, because because yeah. um, you, I think the audience, you, you know, the right, the at this point, it's been written to such a way to where we're kind of with on Jack here, are thinking, yeah, these guys are full of crap. There's just a few of them, you know. It's it's not a whole army of people there. And then when that happens, you're like, whoa, uh oh, <laughs> they're and, in trouble. And, and I still remember, like you're saying, I remember when I was watching it. All right, how did they surround them without them knowing it? Yeah, where because we've had scenes where they're quiet. They don't they don't make. Footprints. They, you know, they, they're just, they're just great at getting around the island without being heard or seen. Right. I mean, yeah, they're like ninjas. I mean, out there, I don't know <laughs> special training that that uh, Ben's doing with them. I don't know what's going on there, but they seem to know how to just get in and out. And then it's always like, and and the trail's gone. I don't know where they're at. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I don't know if the if the island itself is protecting these people or something because they are seem to be ghosts for sure. And um, and that's fine. That's what gives them the mystery. I mean, this is one of the first big moments for us as an audience to realize that these others, these hostiles, whatever you want to call them at this point, is they're they're dangerous. They are really are dangerous. And and our our love, our beloved characters here are really in trouble here. I mean, this 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 is a serious problem. And we're and this this episode really is that first moment where I think as an audience where we're like, wow, uh oh. The, these guys could they got a they got a huge huge problem to deal with here well, also shows is, is go ahead jp i also want to know um when he says when he tells them all to light them up how many lighters do they actually have <laughs> great question <laughs> well they had at least enough for the circle i know it's incredible <laughs> Well, I remember when it came out, there were so many screenshots of it and people talking about, you know, the different thing. And we also hear Alex, but we don't see Alex, but we hear Alex later yes. on. But it also, you know, because question, you look at uh, Rousseau, who knows the island really well. She's she's very clever, you know, making traps and stuff like that. How she never was able to go get Alex, rescue Alex. So we know the others are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I do. I think this this is the moment where you start really realizing how how dangerous they can be. And I think Jack realizes it too. 
Yeah, I, I, everybody. I, I, yeah, they uh, all. You could tell all of them were, had a huge change of, the, of heart as far as what what they felt like was really out there, and uh, that's that's when we they realized we we've, we've got uh, something to, to deal with here. Well, Mister Friendly tells Jack there's a there's a line, so we go right back to where his dad said you know told Chris off island. There's a line that you can't cross, and he tells and Miss Friendly, "This is where you can't cross. You can't go past this line." Of course, I, I remember the theory. Why can't they go past that line? What, what are they hiding over there? What what can't we see? What, who are these people? All that different stuff. Uh, he wants the weapons, and Jack says, "No, we're not giving you our weapons." And of course, Alex. <laughs> and of course, who's who's captured? Kate. Kate. Yeah. And J Jack is like, "Oh, come on." <laughs> Uh, I always love to because uh, in this season, in this particular scene uh, for Mister Friendly, we get that great when he's when when Jack's basically telling him like I don't think you know it's just just you and a couple guys out there, and he has that line where he goes, "That's an interesting theory," and I right, always yeah. remember that because that was one of the clips that you guys had taken that you had uh, in for uh, your show, so that was like one of the many ones that you guys had was the interest interesting theory. Of course, was inserted in the, in the podcast, so I always when I hear the, all those little quotes of that were used in the podcast i'm always like hey i remember that quote <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> but it was just it just what was one of those scenes where you, you go now here do we i know a lot of people are going to blame kate sure but does jack share equal blame absolutely he does you, he yeah. has to you can't just tell her you know no you stay behind you're going to be doing the numbers we don't want you to come along i mean what do you expect of course she's going to go out and try to follow you guys and be buying it and this yeah. he, jack did this selfishly because he's feeling hurt he's he's he thought there was something between the two of them because of the kiss a few episodes before that and he's got these feelings he's obviously falling in love with this woman and now he's starting to think that you know she obviously doesn't feel the same he's been hurt before obviously because we got the same the, we got things going off the island where we see the, his relationship falling apart with sarah he's afraid to get hurt he's trying to distance himself from from her and by doing so now he's put them in a bad situation where she's able to get captured i mean it's just again just poor stuff poor decisions going on here by by uh, by jack so he should have he should have shot her in the foot <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. But you know, when, you know, when Jack tells Kate, just go back and press the buttons. We don't want you here. Blah, 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 the whole thing. He wasn't nice about it because even Sawyer goes, "What did she do to you?" Yeah. And he goes, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, you love her." So, like you're mm -hmm. saying, Jeremiah, we know that he's it's a jealousy type. It's he's hurt. Yeah. And his he's not making so. I know a lot of people over the years bash Kate on this one, and again, she. She should have stayed at that one point. She should have just, she did screw things up at the end. But I think Jack, Jack shares at least equal blame and the, of how it was handled. Yeah. I think that's how, that's how I feel about it as well. I do, I do think he takes equal blame and, um, you know, I, yes. I mean, granted, yes, she probably should not have done that and, and gone out like that on her own. But again, you know, he, he, he caused her to would really want to go out there and do it. Right, and even, and even coming back and just trying to put an army together. I mean, I assume he wants an army because he wants to be the aggressor against the others. I mean, that wouldn't be the right move for Jack to do. Yeah, no. You know, mm -hmm. the right move, the right move for him, I think, would be to defend where they're at, or just leave well enough alone. But I'm, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm well, Jack didn't like the fact that he was told we let you, we let you live on this island. Yes. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Did, Jack did not like that. Like, oh, you do? I don't think I don't think Sawyer or Locke liked it either. I yeah. think all three of them no. kind of got kind of put off by it. No, I, I, I never. It just seems so arrogant. Like, why would you say that to p these people? I mean, I don't know. I, I just feel like you're really poking at them by saying that like you know this is right. uh, we're just letting you live here it's like i don't i don't know if i'd say that you know th we know the others at this point have studied them very well they know everything about these people is this what you want to say to these <laughs> these people because yeah they're all a little off the rocker as it is yeah. i don't think you want to be pissing them off that's just it's just me i maybe i'm wrong here but <laughs> and they know they have lots of guns we know yeah. they have we know they have cameras in the hatch well, later we know that from later on, but uh, 
So yeah. they've been, like you said, they've been watching it. It just, it just was the wrong thing to say. Of course, it makes for great television. Yeah. And do you, I guess we should assume at this point that, you know, Ben had told Tom exactly what to tell them. I'm assuming yeah. at this point. I would, so. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. So no, then, no again, one makes this a, is no poor one makes a planning on Ben. Without, uh, yeah. No one makes a decision without Ben. No. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you have to put blame here on Ben by like telling him to say, Hey, you tell them this is our place. And you know, we're just letting you live here. I mean, that's just bad, the bad decision. <laughs> it's like, we can share this Island. You stay on your side. We'll stay on our side. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that'd been the better way to handle it. But, uh, well, it, it, they were there first. It is, I mean, I, this is my condo. I, you know, if somebody moved in 50 days ago, it's still my condo. But I would say, look, I didn't have a choice. My plane crashed here. I didn't, I didn't ask to come to your island. Yeah, exactly. They are not there because they want to be. Right. <laughs> if I could get off the island, I'd be off your island. You can, you can, yep. you can keep the mangoes to yourself. I don't want them. I'm tired <laughs> of eating mangoes anyway. And then he points, he points a uh, gun to Kate counts to three, you know, gun count to three and Jack throws down his gun. They all throw down his gun. They've got their weapons and Jack is just not happy with Kate. Nope. Nope. Not he's not. Uh, we go back and, and, uh, uh, son is talking to Jen and his son, Jen goes, I don't like being told what to do. And, and, and she goes, well, I did it for four years and didn't like it. Yeah. And Jen yeah. goes, oh, you're right. So we, like you said, Jeremiah, their relationship has evolved from season one and it, now it's, it's different. It's, it's almost like a part, it's almost like a marriage because it's a partnership now. Yeah. We're starting to, they're, yeah, their relationship is finally starting to kind of look more like what a marriage should be. Right. We're getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. And as far as landing, crashing on the Island for them, it was good because their marriage was saved. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no way they, if they'd never crashed on that, they'd, well, of course they end up dying. Spoiler. Alert. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry for you people that have not seen that far ahead. I apologize. <laughs> Blame JP. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> sure. Hope nobody's watching this. that has never seen laws before. That would be a mistake. <laughs> and then they're walking back and Kate's like, check, you know, I made a mistake. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You made a mistake. You made a mistake. Like choosing Sawyer over me. <laughs> 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 and we go back to the flashback and Jack is, she asks, well, how'd the guy do? He goes, oh, he died. He died. And <laughs> yeah. she, how did his daughter take it? Gabriella. And he's like, uh, well, and then Jack right away says, well, she kissed me. Yeah. And I kissed her back. And Sarah's like, oh, but Jack goes, we can fix this. And they hug and all this stuff. And she goes, um, well, We're done. my mom was here because I'm packing. I'm leaving you, Jack. And I'm thinking if I was Jack, I would have said, you couldn't have told me this a few hours earlier. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. I, I put that in my notes, too, as we watching this. I thought, <laughs> I said, wow, I'm sure after he hears this news, he's going to be like, oh, don't gone it. I should have slept with that girl. Yeah. <laughs> I know we're thinking the wrong way, but I that would have been my first thought. Like, Trust, I, a little, little heads up would have been nice. Yeah. I, I would have at the very least just stopped washing those dishes because she made that mess. She can clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> but she says she says she's been seeing someone. Yeah. I know the theory is because she we see her with Christian, you know, Jack. There aren't there episodes where she's he's following her around. And it's she's without with Christian Shepherd, right? Yeah, I think that's if I recall, that was uh, the the theory, right? Right, but I don't think it's it's ever been fact. No, but not that I'm aware of. No. Anyway, she says, uh, Jack, you're always going. You're always going to have to. It's not going to work because you're always going to need to fix someone. I, you've already fixed me. Yeah, you know, I, I'm already I'm already able to walk again. So. I don't know. I just uh, it, again, you know, Jack was never home. She was seeing someone. Yeah. And was, and it, was Jack really in love? No, I don't think he was ever truly in love with Sarah. I, I I mean. He was in love with fixing the problem. Yeah. He's always been, yeah, more interested in the, yeah, about fixing her than ever really being in love with her. So he get, yeah, he just got caught up on, on everything. And uh, yeah, he, you could tell that even during the episode that I mentioned earlier about the no harm episode, when when we see them getting ready to get married, you could tell even then 
this was a bad, this was a mistake that these two really are, they're caught up in everything that happened, you know, with the, with uh, her miracle that it, it was clouding their vision as far as how they really felt about each other. I mean, they were clearly wrong for each other from the very start, but uh, not to say that, that obviously Jack still isn't hurt here. I mean, he's, right. he's definitely hurt by this. Yeah, he's definitely hurt. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there was, at least the kind of love you expect for two people that uh, are, you know, are getting married. So do you think that uh, when we see that go back to the scene where she tells him that she's late, she was late and took a pregnancy test. Do you think she was gauging her, her, his, his response was, was the final straw when he kind of had that look like, Oh, Oh, well, okay. You know, it wasn't like, Oh my God, you're pregnant. You could be pregnant. It wasn't, there was no excitement. No, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like, oh, you're pregnant. Uh, well, uh, you're not pregnant. Oh, we can talk about it later on. There was no connection. There was no. I maybe she was just at that point just setting him up, playing, you know, going back playing poker. Call, she was calling, you know, she was bluffing him to see if, what his reaction was, and his reaction was terrible. That's an interesting theory. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that maybe he? No, uh, I, I think you're. Where I think she, you're right. she decided. I think yeah, now I'm yeah. not. She's mentioning this. I, I could totally see that for sure. Yeah, what do you think, JP? I, I think I think there is something there. No, I, I you know, it's funny is I'm I'm watching this now for the second time, and I just never, even though I kind of vaguely remember some of the uh, the beats in the, every these episodes, I just never would have thought of it like that. That's um, you might say that's a crackpot theory. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it because I think Jeremiah, you mentioned earlier when we were talking about that scene, he wasn't very, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, oh. Gosh, you you could have been pregnant. Yeah, this and is I gonna this gonna be permanent. You know, it's it's it was one of those. It wasn't a it wasn't a reaction. The whole delivery of the the whole delivery too, right? I mean, they, you know, they're sitting in bed and she gets up and she, you know she's kind of like you know, oh you know, hey by the way, and it's I don't know. You're right. It makes me think that just just the way the whole thing goes down, she was trying to test where they were at. Right, well, and that would be like the next biggest leap for them to take. So if yeah. If- wants to stick through this with him let me throw something out there and see how he reacts yeah. uh, based on how he reacted he, that probably helped her make that decision um, it, was she I, again I don't remember was she seeing somebody she said she was seeing somebody but we never, never, we never, I. I know she was she, Jack saw her with Christian okay but we never we never like I said, I think she oh, that could have been something too that she was saying to to get ja- a reaction from Jack. <laughs> you know, it was like you're, you're seeing someone. What do you mean you're seeing someone? You know, and there was no no real pushback from Jack. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. I um I think there's a lot to this because then then that, that puts the question is that maybe at this point when she, if she's testing him to see how he would react to this potentially big news that maybe she was debating about maybe she wanted to consider at least maybe keeping this going and, and keeping saving, trying to save the relationship, but then seeing how he reacted to the potential news. And then of course, piling on, Hey, by the way, I kiss this Gabriella girl, you know, and all that stuff. Maybe that was enough for her to just go, you know, I'm out. I kind of actually have somebody else anyway. See ya. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder if that you're right. This this whole thing had been a test. That would have been so great if she was actually seeing Gabriella. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been. Yeah, <laughs> I could, I, I'm on board for that. Yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Make that happen. Uh, <laughs> then we go to so the show. Kind of the episode kind of wraps up. Uh, I like how Locke says goodbye, James, to uh, to Sawyer, knowing that it knowing that it ticked him off. He had to get that last dig in there. Yeah. Uh, and then Anna Lucia is feeding Vincent and Jack walks up. They're talking. They're talking. He, I, Said said you used to be a cop or you were a cop. You're a cop. He, she says, no, no, I used to be, you know, because, well, how about we train an army? Mm-hmm. And I'm like going, and I, again, I said earlier, I go, I would have gone to Said. Yep. Me too. Now I know they never really trained the army, right? They never, never got around to that, but, um, I, you know, I would get her. I'm not saying you shouldn't get her involved, but I'm with you though. The first person that I would go to would, would be him. I just, I don't, I don't get that, but, 
Yeah, she'd definitely be in my group. She'd definitely be in the, you know, because she did, you know, she was in charge of, you know, the the the, the uh, Tailies for so long. And right. she, she she did know it. And she and he said, you did, she asked, you killed one of them. He said, she said, yes. Well, maybe Jack is still uh, thinking with his other head here because, <laughs> you know, he does kind of have a thing for, for you know, Lucia. And I, maybe he's just like, hey, hey, baby. Remember me and you? We kind of a little connection there uh, before the plane ride. How about we start an army? Huh? You get your guns. I'll get my guns. We'll make a party of this. I don't yeah. know. But I mean, he, 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 he well, I'm, I'm joking, but obviously they're, 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 he's trying to move past Kate. And I think he's hoping that maybe she can be, keep him from thinking too much about her. You know, she could be his distraction. That's what I was just going to say. She could be his distraction. Yeah. Kind of like off Island where his surgery was his distraction. Yes, that's true. Losing Sarah, but maybe that he needed something on the Island. Mm -hmm. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. But anyway, overall, what'd you guys think of the episode? Yeah. I, you know, for, for being thrown back into it at this point, um, I wasn't bored or anything. I didn't feel, you know, I was trying to put myself in a position what if this was the first episode of Lost I decided to sit down and watch? <laughs> because the recap is supposed to be enough where I should be able to move forward now and get into the show. Um, not too disappointing. I liked, you know, especially with the, um, with bringing Mr. Friendly back in this episode, I liked, I, you know, I, I was paying attention. I was into it. I almost want to go back now and start rewatching the show, but I know I'll get bored after season four. <laughs> so um no i and jp i like what you're going yeah. with that that's a really great idea is that if you were if this is an episode you happen to turn on right. you hadn't seen the show in a long time let's say you turn this one on is this a, an episode that's good enough to make you go oh i need to rewatch lost you know what i mean and i like that because and i do think because of the interaction with 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 mr friendly i do feel like there's enough here to make you excited about Lost again, uh, unlike the next episode, which I don't spoil alert, but <laughs> um, this one I do feel like has enough there to make you really, you know, remind you how much you love Lost and maybe you should watch more. This was not, this was definitely not an episode that I would describe as like a filler episode where this was one of the episodes of season two that moved the core story along a little bit. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it was definitely – well, Jeremiah, you kind of – I felt probably, probably probably the same way about the next episode as you do. <laughs> um, again, still good television, but we'll get to it. But, so now we go to Fire fire Plus Water. Uh, Charlie is – it's it's young Charlie. He's got his uh, bunny slippers. He comes downstairs. And all the presents are for Liam. Everything's for Liam. But his mom says, no, Charlie, you got a piano. <laughs> And he, and you're, gonna, you're gonna get us out of here. You're gonna, you're gonna take us out of here. But then he starts seeing Liam, young Liam, in a diaper, yeah. and his dad's cutting doll heads off and, and chopping meat. It just and so now we know he's hallucinating or he's he's. Uh, now does anyone think at this point? I, I'm trying to think back when I first saw. Oh, he's on heroin again because we know yeah. he has statues. Well, and I think I'm sure that's a big part of this conversation we're going to have uh, revisiting this episode is is what can how can we de- you know interpret these dreams or envisions envisions he's having because even though the episode all the way up to the very end implies the fact that Charlie over and over again says that he's not using again, but because the dreams and visions are so all over the place and don't really make a lot of sense. And it doesn't really follow a lot of the other kinds of crazy dreams and visions we've seen from other characters. And it does make you wonder, like, you know, was he using at this point still? Um, because we know he still had access to the heroin and right. it just, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to think, but I, I kind of think that maybe there was some of that going on, even though the show never really told us that that's what was going on. Or was yeah, it he, he, he claims he's clean. Go ahead, JP. I was going to say, or was it the island just trying to? Because at one point, he, he does, in the dream, he hears the whispers. Right. Right. Yeah. So, was he dreaming at that point, or it, it was they, like you said, this episode? They really didn't. They were making us think. 
because what what's going on okay what what you know it just what what's making him say he has to save the baby is it because you know as a child his mom said you're, you you got to save it you'll be the one to save us you'll you're ta- you're so talented you'll you'll you know you'll take us out of here and we'll be we'll be in a better place and uh, so there was pressure on him obviously and, and you kind of see on the back a lot of his backstories there's pressure on him yeah uh, they're they're definitely you're right i mean uh kind of a, a lot like jack uh, in his issue in his life i mean charlie and, and this episode really draws that out is that you know ever since a young age he felt like you said all the pressure to be there be a provider be this this big thing and to um fulfill his mother's dream of him being the something very special Bloody and, rock and, but his life never was you know i mean charlie right. just like everyone on the show is very tragic and very this just, just very depressing <laughs> backstory <laughs> but but uh yeah poor charlie i mean you know and drugs uh helped him that was his his uh, addiction, and yeah. and uh, yeah, I just I just feel like because Charlie's addiction to me was always extremely interesting part of the story. I mean, for his story, it was great, uh, but unfortunately for this episode, it, it just seems mishandled so much that it kind of missed the mark a little bit here, for for me at least. Well, for me too, because I I I I like Charlie not on drugs. I mean, he's, sure. he was. A, I think most of us love Charlie as a character, and this one was a hard episode. I think the reason I didn't like this, it was a hard episode to watch because you're seeing a character you love, who's flawed. We're all flawed, having just a, a tough time, a tough go of it. Yeah, so because it's like, am I supposed to hate Charlie here? Am I supposed, you know, supposed to feel sorry for Charlie? Because you go through a lot of those emotions watching this episode. You're kind of confused because um, this is someone, like you said. I, I, you love Charlie from the very beginning, and just watching this is just really hard. It's hard for me to watch as a Charlie fan to, to watch this episode. Yeah, no, as, same with me. It was the first of all, the way I perceive it is I mean, Charlie has his addiction that he's trying to overcome, and I just think with everything that's happening on the island, him being stuck on the island, whatever. The island does or does not do. I just think, I think all of that put together is what was causing him to like trip out, if you want to say that, because it wasn't. I mean, Charlie wasn't have he wasn't having legitimate flashbacks. He was having flashbacks that were kind of being messed with by these visions. They almost seem like fever, fever dreams or something, like the kind of dreams he would have had when he was going through uh, uh, the withdrawals. You know, yeah, where they're trying to get him off off the heroin. Didn't it kind of feel that way? Yeah. But also, you have, you know, you also have Charlie. We were saying how Jack needs, you know, someone on the island to take him. You know, he has to forget about Kate. So he goes, to Analysia. You know, everyone has all the different things. Where Charlie, his what grounded him was Claire and Aaron. Right. Yes. And now he's been he's been kicked out of the. You know, his one grounding thing. You know, it's about, and you see in his flash family, 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 mm-hmm. and he's, you know. He's he's not he he has nobody now, or he yeah. seems like he has nobody. Because then he sees he sees Locke hanging out with Claire, which upsets him. Um, later on, he brings some Claire some nappies for Aaron, and Claire's like, eh, whatever, Charlie. I still don't trust you. Go away. You're a liar. And you know he tries to tell her, look, you know, give me another chance. You know, I'm I, I made a mistake. I you know I, I should have told you the truth. Absolutely. I mean, you've really hit it. This is exactly what it's about. Because I, I was watching this again. I'm thinking to myself, what what is the meaning of, you know, of these dreams and stuff? And I do think you're right. It's because, you know, Charlie, he couldn't save himself. But now here on the island, he's got, like you said, he's got Claire. He's got the baby to protect. And, and you're right. It's been ripped from him. And he doesn't have that anymore. And you're right. I think that's maybe what these dreams were all about is, is it's tearing him apart. Because he doesn't have this this one thing, his family to, to take care of, right? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but yeah, also like awesome. you said he was a better, you know, not to not Claire, but she really didn't know how to take care of Aaron, whereas Charlie knew. A yeah, lot. and he knew he, he knew how to take care of a baby. You know, when the next we see him visit Karen in the hospital, and he makes his Liam's not there, not to see the birth of his child. He's not even there, but Charlie's there. But he makes an excuse. Oh, we got he got pushed in a bus, and you know he comes back, and, and Liam stoned out of his mind. And Charlie said, "What are you doing? You just had a baby." Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, this baby. Yeah, he he was always there. I mean, his brother really owes him a lot, in my opinion, yeah. because yeah. he would have been in just huge trouble. Because you know, you had that moment where they're talking about like, you know, hey, little brother, you're you're gonna be. Or it was it was later on. There's a those episodes later down the road. I remember them having more conversations about this, like because he knew that Charlie was more likely to be the the family guy, the one to have a have a wife and have a kids, you know, he never, right. I think, you know, he never visualized himself to be that way. Cause he, he considered himself a wreck and he was fine with that. He, he was fine with him being a wreck, but his Charlie kept him grounded enough to where eventually he did get his life in order. And if it wasn't for right. Charlie, it wouldn't never got in order. Was it if, if I remember correctly, was Liam also the one who got him started on drugs? Well, he st Liam was on drugs first and then Charlie, I think get frustrated and he tried it. Yeah. Tried but Liam never said, Hey, try this little brother, you know, yeah. he said, have fun, little loosen up little brother and more, more of that stuff. But I think Charlie was getting tired. Charlie wanted to quit. Okay. Right. Liam, Liam said, yeah, no, because Liam, because they made a deal. If we ever get to the point where we want to, because family comes back to the family, family's more important than the group. And Liam said, no, I'm not quitting and you're not quitting. So I think that's probably why Charlie started heroin. Um, but again, it comes back to family. Want you know, Charlie I was cared more about family than being a bloody rock god. But yeah, yeah it, for sure. It, and then uh, we see Anna Lucia and, and Jack are walking together, and of course Sawyer points it out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they're getting pretty chummy over there, aren't they? You know, he and really course, loves digging that stuff in. Doesn't oh he? yeah, he just. He just he loves pushing people's buttons, as we know, and I, that's why we love him. <laughs> and, of course, Hurley asked Sawyer, well, what are you, you were on the other side. Uh, what do you get that Libby? And uh, yeah. he goes, oh, we got to get a little crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> Kate goes, why do you have to act like you're in high school? And yeah. you know, Sawyer's like, because it's fun. You know, basically, because like, that's what I do. I think that's who I am. He's consistent. Come on, Kate, give him a break. He's consistent. Yeah. And then we have Charlie. He he hear he hears Aaron crying, and Aaron's crib is out in the in the water. And Charlie swims out to save the baby. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, one of the. I, mean, I know we kind of frust get frustrated a little bit sometimes with these dream dream sequences, but uh, there was some cool cinematography in there, like the 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 one with the piano uh, and the and the water rushing over. Right. Just, some yeah. of that stuff was really cool. Uh, the neat the way it looked. It looked cool. Um, even though uh, it was kind of frustrating for some fans to watch, but it was cool. To, it was cool to see it. And yeah, I, that was good at that. Yeah. When they shot that, how they did it with the baby in the piano, I mean, that was incredible. And he yeah. can't open the piano. He's he's got he's got to save the baby, but he can't open the piano. Um, I got to be thinking it's a bad dream because you know he, he, the piano's in the water, and, and where'd they get the piano from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember seeing a piano in 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 the water. Uh, Charlie swims out, and we all brings back that point where Charlie in season one, where he goes, "I don't swim." Yeah, because there's there's another time where Charlie Charlie swims, where people always come back. He said he can't swim. No, he never says he can't swim. I think in one of his flashback, he has he has swimming lessons. Mm. And it's it's he can't he 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 doesn't, he doesn't want to swim. Yeah, he basically won't. He's probably like a lot of people. I, he's probably not very comfortable in the water, and um, you know he doesn't. He would prefer not to, to, to go out there if he can help it. So, Well, it's different swimming in a pool and swimming in an ocean. That's true. We hear about, about that all the time in Survivor is the fact yeah. that – and it's true. Anyone who's yeah. ever gotten in an ocean and tried to swim, it's very different than a swimming pool. Yeah, sure. I, I grew up in San Diego, so I, I swam in pools and swam in the ocean. It took me a lot longer to learn how to swim properly in the ocean than it did – because you have rip currents. You have you, – I mean, all these different factors going on where the pool water just sits there. Yeah. You might have someone peed in it. You know, you might want to swim around that, but <laughs> overall swimming in a pool is a lot easier than swimming in the ocean. Uh, let's see. He sees, uh, then he sees a great scene. He sees his mom and Claire and then Cl uh, Cl uh, Charlie's mom says, you have to save the baby. You have to save the baby. He hears a plane, which we know is Echo's plane, right? Echo's brother's plane sees Hurley dressed up as what was Hurley dressed up as? I'm trying to remember what he, um, it was something weird. Was well, it like a guardian angel or something? I don't, or something weird. Yeah, he sees a dove flying away. Right. So, he sees, so 
again, it's save the baby, save the baby, save the baby. Again, is it a heroin induced thing or is it the island or is he just the stress of losing his Claire and Aaron is causing it to happen? Yeah. I, don't know, I, I just feel bad for him. I do feel bad for him. And, you know, like, I, I don't want to put you to get the wrong impression about the fact of how I feel about this because, you know, this, this is uh, important stuff for the growth of, of Charlie's character and where he's at and what's important to him. You know, as, as you mentioned, Jack, is that this, this is very important to him. Family is important to him. He's mentioned this over and over going, but what about our family? It's our family, you know, and then, and we hear this a lot from him. So th this is, this is very, it's heartbreaking to watch, but it's very important uh, for his character. I agree. And I but do. I don't we, know. I, I maybe maybe it is the island. I I I'm, I am kind of. I I like to believe it. This is all based from the island. The island is doing this to him, and more the drugs. Because I like to really believe Charlie. Because the poor guy, his his course being questioned throughout this entire episode, mostly from Locke, but from everybody about you know, hey, we can't trust you. And I want to believe he never did. And we'll get to when we get to the part where where he gets his drugs out. So. Well, then we get, when he wakes up, Hurley has walked up to him. It's nighttime. He has Aaron in the ocean. goes, dude, what are you doing with the baby? <laughs> he goes, I don't know. <laughs> well, that sure would be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, because that's where we go back to, okay, it, it was daytime when he was dreaming. Okay, now it's night. That's yeah. why I, I, I want to believe it's the island also. He's lost several hours at that point. Yeah, and you know what's funny is because, um, you know, and he talks about his brother talks about the fact that he's danger he that he was dangerous to his family because he dropped the baby because he was right. on drugs and i'm thinking <laughs> you see poor charlie he has wakes up from this vision or dream whatever and he's got a baby in his hands it's like whoa bro you don't want to drop the baby <laughs> and also, uh, I mean, what i noticed too is when it was when it was nighttime on his watch it also said 5 30. oh really i oh. know <laughs> yeah, I knew your I knew your joke. I knew your joke on that one. Well, you had me going there for a second. <laughs> uh, Claire slaps Charlie, just smacks. Yeah, him. takes the baby and smacks him. I you, you can't blame her on that one. No, for sure. Well, uh, yeah. From her perspective, I mean, they you know she tucks her baby in, she goes to sleep, and everyone wakes up and the baby is missing. And there's Charlie, who she's repeatedly said, "Stay away." There he is holding the baby. You know they yeah. don't know he's having these visions and. From their perspective, they're going to assume it's drug induced, even though he doesn't even know what's going on. Right. Yeah. When you watch this episode, I'm sure you guys felt this way too. It, it uh, it's so hard because like th he's doing things that I think most women would be like. After that, yeah, I'm never having anything to do with you, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not anything, bro. But they were able to, of course, mend that, and and they did wind up having a, a good good relationship and all the way up to the end. So. But it, it just, I'm watching this thinking, ah, I don't know if most most women would be like, no, you don't take my baby out in the middle of the night and hang out with them on the, on the ocean and still you, recover you, from you that. You lied to me. You're taking my baby. It's, you're, yeah. you're, acting, you're acting strange. You're a known drug user. Yeah. I, will, I don't know. <laughs> well, I will share a true story, though. When I was about nine, I want to say nine or ten years old, I did use to sleepwalk. Yeah. And there was one time I remember, I don't, I, I don't remember. But um, in the middle of the night, I, when I came to or wherever I was, I was actually standing outside of our house. This was oh. the night. Yeah, I have no recollection of leaving the house. <laughs> it's crazy, and 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 we yeah, and that's obviously true. I mean, my daughter, uh, she she sweeps walks. She used to get up in the middle of the night and would uh, would go into my, uh, her sister's room and like say something weird, like "Hey, what are you doing?" or something, and then turn around and go right back to her per bed it's like I, st I still sleepwalk oh do you really no yeah. kidding yeah every now and then i'll get up and i'll my wife will say something and i go and i'll be in the hallway and i go <laughs> I, I don't know what i'm doing here I, but she, <laughs> sometimes i'll wake up she says i'll talk to her and say something and she'll go yeah just go back to sleep no. and i go back to sleep so it's so yeah i still do it from time to time it's it's one of those fun things we do. Uh, <laughs> Sawyer's trying to teach Hurley Blackjack. It's not going over well. You know. No, no, it did not go very well. And so he goes, well, you know, say something to Libby. And he goes, hey. And then, and then Sawyer goes in his tent. And that kind of breaks the friction there, you know, between she goes, well, hey, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Hurley, Hurley, Hurley. Oh, yeah. it's so much fun watching the awkwardness of him trying to to woo the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie talks with John, and John's really not real patient with him. He, no. you know, he asks him if he's using it again. He goes, no, no, I'm not using it again. No, I, I'm not. I promise. I, I'm not using it again. Yeah. Once a liar. Mm-hmm. Well, and I know I know many people have said this before, and I'll say it again. This is another great moment. The fact that you know here is Mister Locke, who just the previous episode was telling Jack, "Who are we to tell tell Michael what to do?" And here is Locke's just telling you know uh, Charlie exactly what he should be doing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that, that's the problem with that's the problem I have with, with Locke because he he is a hypocrite. <laughs> Oh, oh, for sure. I mean, a lot of them are hypocrites, but especially him. He's got yeah. to be top dog. I mean, he's right. Who are we to tell people what to do? And here he is telling Charlie, no, you know, yeah, stay away I from mean, Claire. Do this, you know. Well, I mean, he's looking. I'm, I'm not defending it, but he's looking out for for her safety, the baby's safety. If if Charlie's back on drugs, I mean, they're putting you know they're putting other people on the island now in danger, and now you have all these. You know, the others out there. I mean, I think I think Je uh, Locke wants to minimize the amount of problems that these people are having on the island, and Charlie just, you know, reverting back to heroin is just another problem they don't need to have. Yeah. All right. I can take. I can. I, good point, JP. All right. Yeah, and and all jokes aside, I mean, in a, this is a moment where you should be telling someone what to do. I mean, drugs is a serious thing. Charlie shouldn't be on them anyway. Uh, for his safety, for his 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 life, and in, uh, yes, for the safety of the people on the island, including of course Claire at this moment. And he's definitely trying to play a protective role uh, in this in this well, incident. He's, but he's Uncle, sure. John, he's Uncle Johnny now. So yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we we come up to one of the strangest scenes in the history of Lost, uh, where the drive shaft is wearing diapers. Oh yeah, I just don't like this scene. It's so awkward. <laughs> it's so I mean, obviously awkward. they've hit they've hit rock bottom. They need the money. They need the money because uh, uh, who, who let, let's stop for a second here. Who what kind of production person said I got an idea for commercial, and it's going to have dry staff. They're going to be in diapers. I mean, really, this is the what this was, was the, the craziest thing I've ever seen. What was the <laughs> something? The, I know the product had something to do with bubbles, but what? Was it like a you kid? call every bodies so, so like bodies? I I don't. It just, it's one of those scenes where I go, I cringe every time I see it because it's, <laughs> it's like like you're saying, Jeremiah. It's like that, this would never. I I don't think it would ever happen, would it? You, God, I hope you know, not. I, I wouldn't see Led Zeppelin wearing diapers going. You know, hey, you all, everybody. I just don't. I just don't see that. I <laughs> I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, but they did need the money. But of course, Liam's all he's stoned out of his mind. Uh, Charlie won't get rid of him. Charlie sticks by him. Yeah. Another uh, thing, but Charlie is very loyal. He's very loyal. Yeah. Very loyal. Very loyal. Because that's my brother. That's it's my brother. brother. It's family. I, I can't fire him. Uh, but then they get fired because they won't get rid of Liam. All right. You I have to admit, though, I, as awkward as that scene is, I I may have laughed a little bit though every time when Liam <laughs> falls out of it <laughs> as he sticks out and falls right backwards. I have to admit, I did laugh at that part. <laughs> Well, the worst part is after I hear you all, everybody, I, I, it's in my head all night long. I know. Every I time. Can't, cannot get it out of my head. I, it's in there right now, just banging around. Uh, yeah. Hurley and Libby are doing laundry. And then Hurley, you know, Libby goes like this and she goes, you know, if someone, t you know, if a woman asks you something, you know, you give her a compliment back. And he's, and, and then Hurley goes, do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> And I yeah. think she and she and she I, she plays it off, but she goes, "Oh yeah, you stepped on my foot." Yeah, you, you were the last one on the plane. And she does describe the plane, you know, but he's looking at. I don't remember stepping on your foot, mm -hmm. because obviously we find out later on that she has seen him before. Right. She yeah. does. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, because kind of just like the previous episode when we had the dialogue between Sawyer and uh, Locke, that leads to a big reveal. Uh, this is another little bitty nod to something that's going to happen uh, a little bit later in this season where we, we find right. out that she was in the hospital with them. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Which is yeah. great because the way she answers it, because we've seen how Hurley got on the plane. He was the last one on. He, he was 
shouldn't have been let on because they had closed the doors. He was wearing headphones. He was all sweaty and he did come at the last second. So we're like going, okay, what, you know, she, the way they played it out, the way they wrote it is like, kind of, okay, okay. We don't think anything about that, about him saying, do I, do I know you from somewhere? It could have been almost like a line, you know, he was caught. He didn't handle the situation where he didn't give her a compliment. Well, so maybe is he trying to, you know, make small talk or something like that. So again, yeah. Yeah, great writing on, on what's going to happen later on. But anyway, I think Hur Hurley's making some ground, some ground there. With he Lydia. is. He I is. So. I mean, lucky for him, she's very smitten on him already. You can tell yeah. that, that she, she definitely has uh, some feelings for him. So it worked for him, but everyone, uh, he, this was a good example guys of what, how not to act in front of the ladies. Yeah. Also he, she brings up the point. I think a lot of us had questions back then is why the washing machines are so up to date and everything else is old. All the appliances are old except the washing machine, washer machine and dry, washing machine and dryer. Well, you know, they'll tell us. I mean, they answered every question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was a food drop. They probably had a appliance drop too. Yeah, right. and it, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> big Maytag truck flew over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maytag, you know, you, you don't ever repair them, so that it goes on and on. Uh, Echoes marking trees. Charlie wants to talk to. He he, he talks to him about the, the tree, and he says basically about baptizing the child. You know, but Echo didn't say go steal the child. Mm hmm. Echo was very clear to say, hey, I never said that. Dude's crazy. He's probably on heroin again. <laughs> he <laughs> He's like, whoa, 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 guys. Whoa. He, he, found, he went and found one of my Virgin Mary statues. <laughs> I have no idea where that guy got that information from because he didn't get it from me. <laughs> uh, Anna Lucia is building a shelter. Uh, Jack gives her a tarp. Huh? And he goes, and goes mm -hmm. uh, I like how she says, uh, what's with you? Are you hitting Kate? You, have you been hitting that? Yeah, he been tapping goes, that. Wait, what? What? He goes, you're hot, like she's hot, you know? Yeah. And he, That's what people do. Yeah. And he, she, he's like, because she's very blunt. And Jack's No, she is. Well. And that's what we loved about her. You know, she's yeah. she's like Sawyer. She she just tells you how it is. It's good stuff. <laughs> uh, then we see Charlie. He smashes the statue, picks up the heroin, and Locke comes in. Are you following me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, I forgot. We, we skipped it. That's where Liam, we go back to Liam real quick. His wife thinks he's dangerous. He's been clean yeah. for two, two months. He sold the piano. Yeah. He sold, he, he sold Charlie's piano. Yeah. Just as they're progress. making progress there. You know, they had a great song going. I thought they had a future in there. And then, nope, he was selling the piano. I'm out of here. You know, uh, but, in, but in fairness, I mean, this is, this is a big moment for him, right? I mean, this is, isn't, correct me wrong, this is the part where he, does go off and clean, get himself clean. straightened up and tries to become, you know, a, a, you know, father to his child. I think if he just would have told Charlie, Hey, look, I need money. I'm going to get myself cleaned up. Right. Uh, can we sell the piano? I think Charlie would have said, okay. Yeah. It was just the way he went about it. It was a real, you know, dick move. It was really jerk. I mean, he, he really didn't need to handle it. He handled it really inappropriate. He goes, I got, I, I, he goes, well, I have a family. And Charlie goes, well, we're family. Right. That also affects, I mean, taking away the piano, now they have no means for making that song. You know, that's just Liam being selfish where, you know, had they gone, it's almost like they're, it's almost like the way they handle it, Charlie would have done it one way, which wouldn't have impacted the family. But Liam, you know, with his drug problems, he's going to just, you know, it's always. Well, I, think, I think Liam wanted out of the music business at that point. Okay. I, I, yeah. I think because I, later on we find out he did leave the music. He, you know, Charlie tries to get him back in, and Liam says, "No, I'm, I'm not doing it." I guess the only here's the only problem I have, and, and uh, granted, we're only getting little snippets of this stuff, but I just there's obviously yes, you're right. There's a change there in his whole attitude and what he wants, but I feel like they didn't do a good enough job in selling that for me. That all of a sudden he's just like, "Yep, I got you know, I don't know." I just you see that lack of wanting to even care about the kid because he's not even there during the birth. Right. But yet all of a sudden we see a little bit later and he's just like, I sold the piano. I got to make this right. I'm going to go and take, you know, it's like you, you do now you, now you want to what? I don't know. It just, I just feel like if I'm going to be negative, that would be one negative is I just feel like they didn't do a good enough job at that point selling it. But maybe 
as I continue to do the rewatch, maybe there's enough there and other flashbacks to help sell that even more. So uh, we'll, we'll see. But at this point right now, just wa- getting to this episode, I feel like there wasn't enough there to make me think that he was wanting to, which we know he did. Well, maybe if he had, had said to, you know, Charlie, you were right. Mm-hmm. Family, family is more important. The band was tearing us apart. It was tearing me apart. It's tearing you apart. It's tearing my, my dot, you know, my whole, the whole, Family units tearing everything's tearing apart. You were right, Charlie. Maybe that would have been a better way. Yeah, because I guess you have to think about. You're right. Charlie is the only guidance he's had, any kind of good guidance here. So we have to guess assume that since he's making this change, a uh, positive change, that it was influenced from what Charlie had must have said to him. Right. About, hey, you need to wake up here. You know, you got a, you got a kid now. You got a kid. So. So. Maybe that's why Charlie was so put off that he you sold my piano. You know you. <laughs> you're not you're not taking me i could use rehab yeah <laughs> he was and, and he's right about that you know he is kind of leaving him there i mean his, his little brother who's tried to been there this whole time for him and you know he realizes that he's got to get himself straight but he's gonna let his brother continue to go down a wrong path i don't know yeah you know that's kind of cold <laughs> yeah that's true never that's liked was, that guy that's anyway why, that's, why, that's why it was hard to watch this episode i think yeah, he's, for he's sure Charlie just getting dumped on Left and right, but anyway, yeah, Claire asked if 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 uh, she can Aaron her can sleep in the hatch, and Locke's like, "Well, there's this alarm goes off every two hours, and it's loud. <laughs> God forbid we, we couldn't press the buttons before it starts going off, and you know." Anyway, so she she goes, "Well, can can you can you move next door to me and you know protect me and stuff like that?" So right. Locke says, "Sure, I'll move in. Cool. Can I call you Helen? I think that's." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> too soon <laughs> yeah <geez. laughs> uh we see charlie building a fire you know he's, he's starting to fire and now charlie's going down the dark side yeah uh, this guy's mr robot look going on yeah yeah exactly uh Said asked he, sides with some rando guy uh can you help <laughs> us he goes no not a good time not a good time <laughs> and so uh, so I, he's, he's the fire 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 uh, and then uh, that we came they don't back. seem to be very prepared for that fire, guys. I, I'm really disappointed. They've been on the island for what fifty something days at this point, and you're not you're not ready for a fire. Come on, come on, guys, yeah. get yeah, it together. Like lightning hits or something like that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Three hundred others drops their torch. <laughs> it's gonna burn our camp. I'm like going. It's not much of a camp. I mean, a lot of people are just sleeping on cushions. And stuff. Right. <laughs> you can move the cushions, but I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't argue. You probably could have moved the camp towards the beach and everything would have been fine. But again, I'm not going to criticize. It's, I'm not sleeping there. It's not, it's not my thing. Well, consider, uh, considering they've been there for 50 something days, you're right. It was a shitty, a crappy camp. Sorry. But, <laughs> but uh, Rob and Sandra did make a two story hut in less than 30 days. So yeah, that's true. Did. Yeah, I, we, we, there, listen. We can all agree that 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 this whole thing would have worked out so much better if Rob Mariano would have been on on that plane. You know, I mean, things would have just yeah. gone so much better. Yeah, for, for sure. If they yeah. come across any puzzles, I agree with you. <laughs> hey, smarten up! I'll build a shelter. Don't are worry about it. Not, are you telling me I can't cross the line? What are you talking? <laughs> uh, or, uh, Ru- Rudy might have been better. Ru- Rudy just went over there and broke it. Oh leg. man, that would be that would be phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, then we have Charlie. He's he's stalking Aaron, and he takes Aaron. Char- Claire chases after him. She's screaming, "Help me! Help me! Help me!" Uh, Locke shows up. Everyone shows up, and he's going. I gotta save the baby. I gotta say, Echo, Echo, you told me to baptize. And Echo's like, "Whoa, whoa, dude! Not like that, uh, not like that man. I never <laughs> like that." <laughs> So he even really Echo, dumped on him, did he? I mean, everybody's dumping on him. Poor, poor Echo. Come on, man. So even Echo's like, you know, hey, I'm not helping you out here. I was like, can't anybody help the dude out? Say, yeah, yeah I can tell him that they need to be baptized, but I didn't tell him to take the baby anyway. Uh, Locke takes the baby, gets, and then just smacks uh, Charlie. You know, beat with like three or four punches. And oh even, yeah, even yeah. Hur- even Hurley didn't help him up. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, he, I'm like going. Ah, nobody, I, I can remember when this episode had the time podcast. I said nobody could help Charlie up. 
No one. It was I've always, always been there to help everybody else, and nobody would say, "Okay, yeah, you you did something wrong," but at least I'm gonna help you get out of the water. Well, he, he set fire to the camp and took a baby. I mean, that's yeah. I forgot about the fire part, but still, and he didn't help Saeed. Yeah, I I, I I totally agree. But there just there was extra frustration that was being taken out on Charlie, in my opinion, by Locke at that point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't. I just think someone should have, you know, hey, we're pissed at you, Charlie, but we're gonna help you out. We're gonna we're gonna help you. Yeah, but, it, it's oh. sad because no one's believing him. I mean, and I know that Charlie mentions this in the episode is that you know everybody else is having all these crazy visions and stuff. Why can't someone you know believe me that hey that I'm seeing something or something's going on? Yeah, Kate sees a horse. You know, everyone's everyone's seeing Walt all over <laughs> the island. I yeah. see, I see someone hurting Aaron. Oh my God, it's, it's I'm on drugs. Right. Uh, but I, I do. But at this point, we don't know that Charlie did start the fire. I mean, we know, but do they know that Charlie started the fire? Yeah, it's a little bit later, but yeah, before they reveal that, you're right. Good point. So, sure. Yeah. Again, Charlie's acting crazy, but at least Hurley should have picked. <laughs> they even make a point of showing Hurley going, "Dude," and walking, you know, walking away from him, like going, "Hurley." He's your friend. Yeah. Up, but no. Anyway, so then uh, Jack checks up on Charlie. He's all beaten up. And and Charlie tells Jack, I'm not using. I'm not using. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm going to ask you. Because Jack asks, can I, can, can I trust you? Can we can we have you around here? Because you're acting crazy. And he goes, that's not what I'm acting. You're just acting, you're acting nuts. Yeah. And then he stitches him up. I, I don't think you can. Because I know I, I took a puck to the face and broke my nose and had his. And they waited so long to uh, – I was in the emergency room for so long that they couldn't sew me up. It had been too long. So they had to use butterflies. And I'm, like, going – so I, could could they have stitched him up right there? I mean, at a certain point, I think it's it's too late. I think you're right about that. I'm not a doctor, but I think that sounds correct. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I remember telling him at the time, the doctor at the time, I go, well, it's not my fault. I've been here for 11 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they butterflied it and didn't stitch it. So I I always question that scene. But I, again, I could be wrong. Um, and then Claire goes and asks Echo about baptizing Aaron. And then he goes, what, what about me? Would I, would I, because I've never been saved. And so he baptizes both Aaron and Claire. And then Locke, who had taken the statues, puts them in the armory or the, the vault. And we see Charlie is all alone. And like you said, he puts a hood over like Mr. Robot. And that's how the episode ends. Um, but so, is Charlie going down the dark side when we see him with putting the hoodie on him? Yeah, I mean, Charlie is a dark, dark point at this point, for sure. I mean, um, this is, as you mentioned earlier, this is everything is being taken away from him. That's very important to him on the island. And he's done everything in his mind. He's doing everything to try to help Aaron, help the baby. He felt like this was what he's supposed to be doing. And he's being rejected by everyone. And this is a, this is just a really sad point for him right now. So he, I mean, he, he basically just took it to an extreme. He really was, it was almost like he was to the point of just desperately trying to, get back in Claire's good graces. So let me try to save the baby. But, um, but um, I, I think with everything that's happened in his life and the drugs and everything, I mean, it just wasn't, it was almost like out of his control. I mean, he just didn't, he didn't see what he was doing as being harmful. Yeah. Plus, plus the pressure of you have to save our family. Mm -hmm. Right. At yeah. eight, eight or nine, whatever it is. And she, your mom's, you're our hopes to, I think your, maybe the mom's hope was that she would take, they could go away and get away from the dad. Maybe the dad was abusive. I mean, we see him cutting off doll head. We see, you know, he's violent when he's hitting the meat. So maybe he was abusive towards her. Maybe there was a lot of pressure. I don't, there, obviously there's daddy. Everyone has daddy issues on this show. So Charlie's no different. <laughs> sure. But he, again, he did, he does hit rock bottom. And I think that's why the, this episode for me was hard to watch because it's like, okay, it's Charlie. I want to see good time, Charlie. I don't want to see Charlie, but, but it's a great, it's a good episode for Charlie because it takes his character. We see, you know, it, it makes him more of an interesting character, but 
me, it's like, uh, no, I, I don't, I, I would, I think I would have helped Charlie out of the water. Yeah. And I think, I think at the time it was frustrating. The, the problem was this, this was, I think the timing of the episode was a little frustrating for fans because you had all this buildup from the previous episode where this attention between the others and themselves starting a war and all this stuff. And then we get this episode and you're like, so mm, you feel kind of left out like, Oh, really? We're going here right now about someone we really care about. And so, yeah, I think, you know, I think, uh, probably during the time it was disappointing. And even as a rewatch, you know, you get to this episode, you're know, kind of like the brakes be put on and you're like, Oh, you know, the excitement has kind of died down for a second to deal with this really just kind of dark, depressing episode about a character we love so much. But big question I have for you guys that I still kind of even struggle with even today is the significance about the uh, baptism, you know, like, I, I, you know, the importance of it for Aaron. I mean, what, do we feel like, especially as an audience at this point, I mean, do we feel like we even understand that for Charlie? What was that about that, the, 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 the need to have the baby baptized? Was, was there ever a payoff? I mean, I've, I, well, yeah, no, I was trying to think that too. Charlie was very religious. Yeah, that's true. So is it more of that, more of that than Jack? Or that I think with Echo talking to him and, and saying, you know, and he, and he, again, I think he needed, I think, you said Jeremiah, he needed a purpose, you know, to keep, he was trying to get back in, in, uh, in Claire's good graces, but he was going about it the wrong way. Okay. Was ever messing with his head too. I mean, it's, it's the whole thing was, you know, he was literally almost going crazy with the, yeah. the, the visions he was having. So plus he sees the vision, you know, you know, Hurley's dressed as a pre, whatever he's dressed as. And, and you have, uh, you know, his mom and Claire saying, save the baby, save the baby, save the baby. So, when he hears Echo says, Echo says, you know, you baptize the baby, you know, so he, uh, I think that's where he got in his mind that he had to baptize the baby. But um, did the island think, want the baby baptized? That could be it. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But overall, <laughs> you guys love the episode, hate the episode, like it. Well, just like any, anything any episode of Lost is always so much better than most a lot of television. So I, you know, I always enjoy watching every episode of Lost, and um, this is a, an episode that uh, has a lot of growth for a character that everyone always have loved and will be cherished forever. So there is some significant importance to it, but it definitely would be on the lower end of my rankings if I'm doing a power rankings for season two. This poor episode's probably towards the bottom, if not the bottom, I'm be just because. You know, like I said, it's just so difficult to watch uh, because we hate to see this happening to our to our beloved Charlie. But, uh, yeah, so I, I would put it towards the bottom as far as uh, the overall uh, love of the episode. Uh, but again, it's lost. I love it. What's um, what's interesting about this episode is out of all 110 episodes of Lost, this is by the L.A. Times. This is considered the second worst episode. Whoa. I knew. I did I not know that. I, I knew it wasn't a popular episode out there. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I think I think another problem too is you, you have the flashbacks. You're you're literally feeling sorry for Charlie. You're right. like, oh my god, what a you know what a what you know his brother's treating him like crap. His dad obviously doesn't care about him. And he's you know there's so much going wrong with his life, even though he's so loyal. And yeah. then you see on Island where Charlie's acting. You know, he's doing things that. Yeah, it would piss me off, you, you know, especially if it was my child. You're taking my child. You, you, you know, this is my baby, Charlie. You know, it's like Claire would say. Yeah. I'm not doing Claire's voice, but it just seems like maybe that was a problem, too, because one part you're you're, you're feeling bad for Charlie, and the next minute you're like, come on, Charlie. So it's like, you know. Yeah. This, yeah. this particular episode to me, if I were sitting down and rewatching the whole thing from start to finish – this would be, you know, for example, when I watch BSG from start to finish, there are maybe three episodes that I get to in that series where I just wish I could skip past. <laughs> um, but just having watched these two episodes back to back to do this with you guys tonight, um, I, I didn't take anything away from this episode. From what I remember about the show in a whole, there was nothing that I... I don't, nothing about it really that I'm going to remember from this episode. Yeah. Plus I mean, they, completely, they completely forgot about Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, who cares about him? <laughs> it's not even brought up. Who's this Michael guy? I don't know. Yeah, we're we're going to build an army, but you know, let's take a break. Let's yeah. <laughs> play Blackjack. 
Yeah, and in, there's, I mean, this isn't the only episode. Um, there's obviously definitely other episodes that had the same thing where there's this, uh, again, going back to the timing of a particular episode, and this is one of those where you insert this here, and you're like, hey, wait a minute, what about, like you said, what about Michael? What about this army? What about what's going on here? We got This is what we got to deal with. So I do think that if this would have been placed somewhere else in the season, maybe we wouldn't have hated as much. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? But uh, hey, it's there, and I'm not surprised that it's on the bottom of a lot of people's list of of so of uh, lost episodes. I'm not that surprised me at all. I'm sure in the comment section we'll probably get people saying, "Yeah, it wasn't my favorite episode either." Sure. I, I remember this episode not being very popular at the time. Yeah, yeah me too. But like again, for me rewatching it, it's like it, it was mostly because I didn't like the way the direction Charlie was going, and also like you said, you know, UJP, the story kind of stops. You know, it just kind of. Like, Okay, you, you got the story going. We got the others. We got everything else going on. And well, now you've, like you said, Jeremiah, they put it in this thing. And it's like, okay, well, why did we put the brakes on here? Right. But that's what Lost, that's what Lost does it, from time to time is they put the brakes on because, all right, we got, we don't have an end date yet. We got to pump the brakes. And yeah. And it, you know, it's network television. This is a different time, too. You know, I was thinking about this. Lost probably would look very different if this was a Netflix show or an Amazon show or something like that. I think because uh, you wouldn't have the 20 plus episodes or whatever. You, right. They probably would have shortened this down to a lot less. And so it would be tighter story. And we definitely may not have gotten something like this. It would be uh, probably completely cut all together. This, so. this episode actually aired. Um, um, Third week of January. Yeah. And I know, I know movies wise, you're not going to get some really good movies coming out in January. So I'm just wondering if from a TV standpoint, did they just figure nobody's going to be watching? Let's throw in. It's not sweep week and we're going <laughs> to. Yeah, nothing, nothing important. Yeah. I saw that aired on January 25th, 2006. So yeah, not a lot going on back then. So, you know, We've got that creepy scene with adult men in diapers. What are we going to do with it? Put it in <laughs> we got to have that scene because people are going to love it. Exactly. You know, and if this was episode aired today, if it aired in 2020 instead of uh, uh, 20, 2006, there'd be a thousand memes on the internet right now. If that episode just oh, yeah. aired this week, could you imagine how many memes would be on the internet with those diapers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When your friends hey. have had too much, you know, there's been <laughs> so way. many memes. I mean, we could probably sit here for an hour and come up with a bunch of good ones. <laughs> oh. Any final thoughts? Um, I, you know, I'm, I, for me personally, I kind of, ah, I remember how much I enjoyed Lost in the beginning. And I really kind of like, there's a part of me that just wants to get back there and start watching it again. But then there's the part of me that just was so, I couldn't wait for the show to end. I didn't want to, I didn't want to watch Lost anymore, but I had to watch it just to see how it ended. So I could listen to my favorite podcast. But, <laughs> but I, and I know I'm going to get to that point. You know, I can, I can rewatch BSG a million times. I'm satisfied with that from start to finish, but uh, oh god, you were really, one of the ones that didn't like the ending. I've lost. Yeah, I, I didn't like the last. I want to say the last season and a half. You know, after I think it was after the third season. Once they started, once if, if I remember correctly, was it Men in Black and Jacob? Was that like fourth season? Um, First time we see them. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think it. I think it was. I think it was. Until, I don't. I don't think we actually physically see them until five, right, Jack? I think or so. Yeah. Um. And yeah. And I don't don't feel bad. I mean, JB, you you fall in a category of a lot of people that felt that way. Um. There's people. Our our house is divided. <laughs> um. <laughs> I have people in my house uh, that hated every second of the last season, and and, and maybe even parts of the of the season before that, but. Um, and, and I, of course, on the other hand, fall in the category of someone that was just devastated and so heartbroken to see it end, you know, but, um, uh, these, these, these particular episodes are, are, are still pretty solid, especially the, the hunting party is definitely the best of the two. And, uh, for me, uh, kind of like you had mentioned JP, I mean, if I was to jump in with the, with the second one, uh, with the, um, uh, uh, fire and water, I don't know how much it would have enticed me to watch it again. 
but uh, definitely the, the the first one, the hunting party, is definitely one that is uh, a, a little bit more of a shining moment for me on these two episodes. Awesome. I mean, and I, all, and, and fairness, I hey, I, once Jack asked me to come on the first time to to cover the, the couple episodes, then it enticed me to start watching again. And I'm, I am going through this. So I have already gone past this in my rewatch. And I had, when he, when he messaged me to come on for this, I had to go back. So I've watched both of these episodes twice within the last uh, month. So nice. I had to go through and watch the pain of Charlie uh, twice now. And uh, yeah, even the second time around here in the last month, it, well, it didn't still didn't sit very well with me on this episode. But uh, it, yeah. I said before, my hardest thing is I I stop. Yeah, I, I, I like I said I want to this, but Fire and Ice didn't make me want to watch the next episode. Yeah. Whereas right. most like I think like you're saying, JP is in Jeremiah. It's like it's not it's as far as Lost goes, it's it's one of it's one of their weaker episodes. But as far as television goes, it's still Lost. It's still I think it's one of, one of the greatest shows of all time. But this episode, like if, when I watch. Uh, the hunting party. I want to watch the next episode. Right. I go yeah. to fire and ice. I'm not from fire and ice. Fire and water. I'm like, uh, I, got, I got to watch because we're doing the rewatch. Um, but sure. it, I, didn't, I didn't want to go on to the next episode. Yeah, and that's the bad. That's the bad part. Yeah, because it, again, it, I was depressed at the end of the episode. <laughs> it's like, oh, yep. I know, I know, Charlie's not real, but there are Charlies out there, and it's just like, it just felt bad for him. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. But anyway, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, well, thank you for having uh, having me come on. Oh no, I this was a great talk. I enjoyed it. Even that uh, JP, where's my son? I, I uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We're out of here. <laughs> all right, thanks. Good night.